And welcome to the 13th meeting in 2017 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Can I remind everyone present to switch electronic devices to silent? Um, can I also um, note that this is John Scott's final uh, committee meeting and can I thank him very much for his service to the committee and wish him all the best in his new duties in the thank Parliament. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure serving on your committee convener. Thank you. Um, our first agenda item today is cross party group, proposed cross party group on women's health. I'd like to welcome Monica Lennon, MSP, to the committee this morning and invite Monica to make uh, an opening statement about the proposed group. Good morning, uh, convener committee, and thank you for having me along today. I'll try and be very brief, hopefully. The, the name of the cross party group does make it very clear what we are all about. Um, we felt there was a need to give more attention to a range of health issues um, which only predominantly or disproportionately affect women. And we feel that we have a, a good um, group of people who can inform the parliament and other policy makers. Um, it's, as a new MSP, it's my first time being involved in setting up a cross-party group, but I've been really encouraged by the interest from across the Parliament from other members and from external stakeholders to um, we've had uh, an initial meeting which was very well attended and there are an abundance of topics that people wish to explore. Um, there is some um, common interest with other cross-party groups but we hope that that's a benefit and we can work together with other cross-party groups, um, particularly those that have an interest in health, like health inequalities or mental health. So hopefully it will be a positive addition to the Parliament. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions from members? Emma Harper. Yeah. I, um, I was doing a wee bit of research about the number of cross-party groups. We've got about 94 or so right now. 25 of them are health-related and there's 129 MSPs, so it's a challenge to go to cross-party groups. And I think, I actually like the idea of having one on women's health uh, just targeted on that. But when you we look at, like, crossing over to mental health, for instance, how would you propose to coordinate maybe doing joint group meetings, or, or is that would that be the plan? Yeah, I mean, I think initially to get ourselves established, I mean, I think we've certainly got enough topics to be getting on with to have our own meetings um, I, I think you know there would be um, benefits in having joint meetings in the future particularly when you think about the, the demands on MSPs times to, to, to be at cross party groups but um, with myself as convener you know obviously I'm very committed to, to the group Alison Johnston uh, another ex well, she's a very experienced MSP as vice convener um, I mean just to give an example I think you know the, the work that we do in parliament you know there's many members debates we all take part in. It was really a, a conversation I had with Kenneth Gibson, MSP, when he led a, a members debate on endometriosis. And I think that was um, quite an illuminating debate because we learned that um, you know, as many women are affected by endometriosis as people are with diabetes. And I think there is a diabetes cross-party group and there's a lot more public awareness around that. Um, so again, I think there's, there's plenty of interested. Again, we already have um, uh, Secretariat support committed from the, the Chartered uh, Society of Physiotherapists. Um, so we think we'll be quite a well-organised and, and well-resourced cross-party group. Stuart? You can, as you've indicated, Monica, there will be lots of work that could be done uh, a, a, across the, the whole sector, but trying to prioritise in your first few months, if you go forward, what would, you, what, would, what would your main goals be for the first six months or year to try and ensure that you do capture uh, the, the, the abundance that, that's there, but can streamline it to make sure that it's going to be relevant? Because otherwise it just it gets diluted if there are other groups doing things as well uh, and you're trying to co uh, accommodate other groups, uh, making sure that you can be identified as a cross-party group that has a real main purpose uh, in going forward. No, thank you. That's a, a good question. Um, I think the challenge after the first meeting was that there were dozens of topics that people wanted to raise, but I think they, they were distinctive and that I, I'm not aware that, that any of them have really been explored in depth at other cross-party groups. So I mentioned endometriosis. Um, 
you know, for all of these, if we're looking at, you know, diseases, for example, um, there seems to be a recurring issue about, uh, particularly with ovarian cancer as well, that, you know, identifying uh, the symptoms. So there's, a, there's an educational issue there, I think, for the medical profession as well. Um, other topics have been raised about um, access to reproductive health and rights for disabled women. And again, I don't think any other cross-party group is looking at that. Um, how do we improve attendance um, at smear tests? Um, some of the work that, that I've been doing around um, access to sanitary products, um, but also looking at um, incontinence products. And again, there's some issues being raised up by the physiotherapists, and it links back to um, the issue around mesh. And I know the Parliament's very well aware of that and there may be other cross-party groups looking at the whole uh, mesh uh, situation but again it's about what is the experience of, of women when they're trying to access healthcare it's looking at the barriers in terms of you know child care um the impact of of gender-based violence domestic abuse and how does that contribute um for certain things like that there's, there's mental health issues but again that could be an example where we could speak to the cross-party group on mental health thank you any further questions, Ms. Lang? No, can I thank you very much for your attendance at committee this morning? Um, I think you'll gather that the committee is concerned about the capacity of cross party groups given the number and the volume that are there, but nonetheless, this will be, um, it will deliberate on its merits in, in its own right. So uh, um, we'll take your decision at agenda item two and you'll be informed of our decision as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now move to agenda item two, and it is for the committee to consider whether to accord recognition of the proposed cross-party group on women's health. Can I take any comments from the committee? I think it's probably worth putting on record um, from my own point of view that I'm involved in the cross-party group on inflammatory bowel disease and the cross-party group on MS, who have already been looking at collaborating on a um, a meeting around continence issues and I think you know it's um, you know something that I think if we agree this cross-party group it could be involved in as well. Mr Scott. I think uh, a colleague raised uh, the, the suggestion that there are possibly um, re we are reaching the point now a year into the parliament where we have quite a lot of cross-party groups but uh, I think this is a perfectly good one to be formed, I must say, but um, the, the, the attendance at some cross-party groups will s determine whether or not they, they survive, you know, it's the survival of the fittest, um, I suppose, but um, I think I'm all in favour of this one being set up. <coughs> mm -hmm. Any more comments? I agree with John Scott. I think you know it's very valid to look at the specific issues that Monica Lennon has outlined. Um, my concern is that uh, there's a lot of cross-party groups, but I think as we move forward, we might need to review the processes around it and the challenges. I myself have the diabetes one, the lung health one, chest, heart, throat, Scotland, and uh, it's a real challenge to get your colleagues along to m make the meetings coordinate. Yeah, I think that's when it will come back to this committee um, on the annual returns to see if they've managed to meet their um, criteria going forward. But it's certainly something we could maybe look at in the future if it becomes more of an issue, Mr Johnson. We were to look at kind of the sustainability of either particular groups or groups in general. I mean, I think one of the things that perhaps we should be pointing out to members is that absolutely in their gift to organise one-off events or even series of events um, that, that with outside organisations in, in this place, you know, stopping short of a, a CPG. A CPG isn't the only vehicle for, for um, discussing issues in this place outside of committees and outside of the chamber. And I think maybe we, we could also think about the, the other avenues that are available in promoting groups. I think that's a, a point very well made. Mr. Sure. Can mean, I, I agree with I agree with Emma Harper. I think, you know, this one will attract a good number of topics and a good number of people. It may well be the case that the ones that have already been established may wither on the vine because of that, uh, uh, and and I think that's that's just the process we find ourselves in as we go forward because it has been identified that that time is very precious uh, for all of us and for these organisations, uh, and to have them spread too thinly, 
uh, across a number of cross-party groups is not good for the organisations either. Uh, if they've got the, the time and the talent to focus on one or two, uh, then that may benefit even more people. So I think you know a review will take place, I'm sure, just by the, the nature of the, uh, the, the way we go forward. But I think that that needs to be looked at just to see how successful some of them are. Do so you think the committee would be interested in maybe having a review round about October time when mm. a lot of the initial mm. setups will have done their annual returns? November time. Yep. November time. I would, I would, I would think that would be a very sensible idea because that will give us a, an overall to see which ones are really are, are managing and which ones are, are coping and which ones are struggling. Yeah. Yep. Notwithstanding, mm -hmm. indulge me in my last meeting. I, th I think it should be a gentle review yeah. mm -hmm. because we it, we must encourage this type of activity as a parliament, and it, it enhances and gives us strength and depth in the parliament to have this added interest and in information gathering. Um, so uh, a gentle review, yes. I mean, there may be that there is an optimum number to be arrived at of cross-party groups once we reach 100. I don't know. Maybe there's something like that as an optimum number, but I think we should be very gentle. OK, so the committee will come back to this later, but um, in the item that it's in front of us on the agenda is the members wish to agree um, recognition of the Proposed cross-party group on women's health. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. And um, we now move into private session. Thank you.